welcome to Lab 8 Part 2, where we will cover curve fitting using SciPy's curve fit function. To start, we must first import our data. For this video, I will be using this data as an example. Once we have our imported data as a list, we must split it into its x and y value. So I will set data x equal to this comprehension point at index 0 for point in data. And then data y is equal to point at index 1 for point in data. For the first example, we will fit the data to this linear line, where x here is the variable and a and b are constants, and we will use the function to find our constants a and b. To get started, we will import the function from scipy.optimize import curve fit. Then we must return the equation to fit in a function. So I will declare a function f with the inputs of the variable x and the constants a and b. Note that the variable must always be first followed by the constants. Then I will cast my x into a numpy array so we can do numpy operation. Finally, I will return our equation which is a times x plus b. Now we can call our function, which is curve underscore fit. Then we need our equation f, as well as our data x and data y list. And this function returns two variables, the first being the coefficient, and the second being the covariance. In this case, we're only interested in the coefficients. Before we print the coefficients, we must first import numpy as np. Then let's go ahead and print coefficients. And here we get a list of all of our coefficients. And each of the coefficients maps directly to our constants. In this case, a is 46.2 and b is 9.43. Now that we have our coefficients, we must calculate our r squared value. To do that, we will follow these equations. For the first equation, we will set y fit equal to, and then call our function f, pass in our data x, then our two coefficients at index 0 and at index 1. The second equation is sstot equal to numpy.sum, Another set of round brackets, data y minus numpy dot mean of data y, and all of that squared. Our third equation is ssres equal to numpy dot sum, a set of round brackets, data y minus y fit, and all of that squared. Finally, r squared is equal to 1 minus ssres divided by ssTOT. Finally, we can print out r squared as r2. And here we get a very low r squared. Now we will plot our function by importing matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And first we need our x values, which we will set equal to numpy.line space between 0 and 0 0.2. And this will return 50 even space numbers between 0 and 0 0.2. We will start by plotting our data points as a scatter plot using plot.scatter. Then we will plot our linear line using plot.plot, .plot, passing our x values. To get our y values, we will call our function f, pass in our list of x values, and then we need the values for our constants a and b, where a is coefficient at 0 and b is coefficient at 1. We will give our plot a title. We will use the percent dot point five f as placeholders, where the percentage indicates a placeholder, the 5 indicates 5 decimal places, and the f means a float. Then our variable x plus percent 0.5f and then percent tuple coefficients. And this will put the numbers into our placeholders. Finally, plot.show. And here you can see our linear line, which poorly fits our data points. For our next example, we will fit to this nonlinear function. So once again, we will use our function f with inputs x, a, and b. Then we will cast our x as a numpy array and return our equation. Here our equation is a times brackets 1 minus numpy dot exponential of negative b times x. 
Once again, we will set coefficient and covariance equal to our curve fit function, then pass in f, data x, and data y. Finally, quintile our coefficients. In some cases, we may need an initial guess for each of our constants. To do this, we can pass this in using p0 equal to a list of our initial guesses. For instance, we could guess a to be 15 and b equal to 100. Sometimes we may also need to set our maximum number of iterations. To do that, we use max FEV equal to, let's say, 1000 iterations. We will once again calculate our R squared and plot our graph. Here, I will copy the code from above and paste it in. Here, we see the R squared number is much higher. Then, we will copy the code for our graph. The only change we need to make here is to our title, which we will enclose between dollar signs to indicate an equation. Then percent 0.5f brackets 1 minus e raised to the power of curly brackets negative percent 0.5f times by x and then close the brackets. Now here you can see our new graph with our new equation. Moving on to our final example, where we must fit to the first derivative of this function. In this example, we must first calculate the first derivative of this equation using SymPy. So we will import SymPy as sp. Then we need all of our symbols, which are x, a, b, c, d, e, and f, equal to SymPy.Symbols of x, a, b, c, d, D, e, and F. Then we must translate this equation into a SymPy expression. So we will set that equal to y, which is a times SymPy dot sine of b times x plus the c times SymPy dot cos of d times x plus e times SymPy dot exponential of f times x. Now we will take the first derivative of y using y dot diff with respect to x and then the first derivative. Let's go and print out y. Now that we have the equation to fit, we can copy this and once again declare our function f, where here we have the variable x and then the constants a, b, c, d, e, and f. Once again, cast x as a numpy array. Then we will return the first derivative, so paste that here. But we're not quite done yet. We must set these math functions as numpy functions since we're no longer dealing with symbols. So numpy.cos, numpy.sign, and numpy.exponential. Once again, we will set coefficient and covariance equal to our curve fit function, pass in f, data x, data y. And in this example, we have a list of our initial guesses. So we will set that equal to p0 equal to 0 0.525, negative 1.5, negative 15, 0 and negative 100. We must also set the max iteration to 1000. So we will set max FEV equal to 1000. Now let's go ahead and print out our coefficients. I will once again copy our code for R squared and our graph. Paste it here. So we have to make a couple changes here. In this example, our f takes in four more variables. So we need coefficient at 2, coefficient at 3, coefficient at 4, and finally coefficient at 5. Now we will also copy this and paste it into our second call for f. For this example, I won't do the title. And here you can see our r squared value as well as our graph. 